Mm-hmm. And I remember that so well. At that time, my son was six years old. Okay. And a woman walked out and said, no, so the child in the film ate some pebbles. And now my child is going to go home and eat some pebbles. What you like ruined my kid's life. And I remember oh. looking at her and I said, now in this generation, they're exposed to everything. Mm. I cannot, as a mom, I cannot depend on media or schools. I have to have a role as well. At that time, my son used to live in costumes, literally. <laughs> Spider-Man, Superman, yes. in bed, in the plane, in the mall, at home, in school. Yes. His, and I remember so well donating his clothes because <laughs> they're, you know, they yeah, don't exactly. fit him with their tags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as, as a mom, I cannot say, you know what? I'm never letting him watch any superhero film. Yeah. Because he eventually will. Yeah. And by me saying no, it will make him want to watch that and exactly. no more. So it's my role saying watch, but you know what? You can't climb on buildings. Exactly. You can't fly. So that's me saying this is <laughs> 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 All right, welcome back to Tell Me Why, which is a Gulf News original podcast. This is Maria Botros, and today is a very special episode. I have uh, a very important and special guest with me in the studio. I'm truly honored and pleased to welcome Sheikha Jawahir bint Abdullah Al Qasimi, who is the director of Fun and Sharjah International Film Festival for Children and Youth. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I know it's quite the distance coming from Sharjah, <laughs> so we really appreciate Thank it. You. Um, first of all, uh, Sheikha Jawahir, tell us about yourself. Like you were just talking to me uh, before we started the the episode and before we started recording, you were telling me about your your. Mar- marvelous journey, um, your professional career, and your marvelous journey through the years. And um, we're not going to reveal your age because <laughs> you look really young, but I was in awe that you achieved so much at such a young age. So tell us about yourself, please. Well, I graduated school when I was 15 and then went wow. into Sharjah University. I actually started with MIT as a major because everyone oh. was studying MIT at that time and that was kind of the trend I would say mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. in the 90 yeah it was 99 okay I took a course and then I hated it so much <laughs> and I was like no I'm not doing that I switched to English language and literature because I love the language Amazing. that was my reasoning and I remember meeting the head of English and he goes well why do you want to move Mm. He, we had to convince him to switch the major. So I said, I love the language. And he looks at me and he says, I have never seen this answer. Everyone comes and says it's because it's easier. Oh, and I was wow. like, well, not okay. really Shakespeare and phonics and not really easy, yeah. but I love the language. And I, and I love reading and I used to write prose and poetry at that time. So I was in awe of the language. Very nice. So I did that. And then I worked uh, for around nine to 10 years in the educational sector, which uh, I was an English teacher for a couple of years, and then a librarian, and then an English language coordinator for the English teachers section. Mm. So that was all in uh, primary school. Amazing. And I started that doing that when I was 19. Wow. It wasn't easy. Yeah, you were very young. Uh, yeah, I remember my parents taking me to first day of work. Oh, no. <laughs> and I actually worked with women who used to work with my mom. So okay. they, because my mom was a social worker in a school for 15 years previously okay. to her current job. Mm. So they remember me as a child coming with my mom <laughs> and I worked with them. But in a way, that made me feel safe. Yes, of course. Uh, I was yeah. always mistaken. They thought I was a student wearing an abaya. I was like, what? Because <laughs> I was too young running around. <laughs> you were around. really young, yeah. <laughs> but it it shaped me. It mm. shaped. Um, I used to go home and cry. It was so overwhelming sometimes. Uh, I had to be strict where I couldn't. Mm. I, I had to kind of, you know, third graders, uh, you know, tone them down, mm. focus on them. And I had zero experience of teaching mm. previously. Uh, so it was it was a learning experience. And then 10 years after that, I felt I needed change. And that's when uh, I got an interview at Her Highness's executive office. And I was offered, um, it actually started as, so Her Highness wants to do a children's film festival. Mm. 
Uh, at that time, Abu Dhabi Film Festival was still happening. Diff was still happening. Yes. But the way Her Highness wanted it, her vision was completely different. It was focused on the children, uh, focusing on their skills, uh, films for them, about them, by them. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't as well easy. It was, uh, you know, starting everything from scratch. So we decided to start an organization, a media arts organization, uh, that will have the festival as a project. Okay. So we launched that at the beginning. Um, and then the festival was launched on, in 2013. So the festival was like the byproduct of, yes, the, of the council that you yes. created. And is that council fun? Fun, yes. Okay, nice. Um, so... Just so that our listeners uh, who aren't familiar maybe with FUN, uh, can you explain more about what you do in the actual council? So FUN, um, our mission is to be uh, the leading media arts platform in the in Sharjah and hopefully in the UAE. Mm. So we're very focused on media arts. So it's not only filmmaking, it's animation, photography, graphic design, and obviously with everything that's coming up, we try to keep up with what's trending, what's new, um, type of photography. Um, so let's say now most of them do, you know, filmmaking with phones. Right. So we try yes. and introduce whatever is new uh, in these workshops. Okay. And then other than the workshops, we also do, um, let's say, mentorship programs with, you know, the pioneers in the industry as well. We do different kind of events other than the film festival because the film festival is focused on uh, films film. and filmmaking. Exactly. So we try to kind of, so we had an event called Anime for Shasha. It's called Anime. We had a VGX. We had an SFX event. So we try and focus on different types of media arts Mm -hmm. throughout the year as well. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's what we do. And what I like about Sharjah, it's everyone is focused on what they do. So it's there's no clashing. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we have the Sharjah Art Foundation, for example, that's focused on, you know, arts and classical arts and, you know, all of that. We are focused on media arts. Mm -hmm. And then let's say women's sports is focused on sports. So that kind of gives everyone the space to grow Mm -hmm. in their own field. Yes, I, I'm just I'm I'm really um, fascinated by fun and by SIF uh, in general, because I feel like we seldom hear, you know, about organizations or about initiatives that um, encourage uh, creative skills in children and gives them a platform to explore those skills. I feel like that's crucial because it helps them build their confidence. It helps them explore, you know, different uh, areas of creativity. It helps them grow. It helps them interact. It helps them network. It helps them get exposed to so much more than what they learn in a classroom. And I feel like that is a crucial learning experience. And, uh, and honestly, it's fascinating what you're doing right now. Um, I enjoyed the fact that you were saying, you know, you were into English and literature and poetry, which is also a form of art. And I, before we get into, you know, more of the details about SIF and, and FEN, I wanted to know, like, do you still, you know, express, you know, your, your creativity in, in that form of art? I don't have as much time as I used to (laughs) as a mom of three and a full-time job but yes uh, I still I do I still write not as much okay but uh, yes I still do that and I still read okay I am like and I I'm I'm people might hate me for saying that but I'm I'm always with actual books I like the smell nope I don't hate you for that I agree (laughs) not Kindle not e-books I I don't have that connection with them I would wake up in the middle of the night turn on the lamp continue my book if I'm that intrigued in it yes and um and I feel it's my thing Mm. you know I'm in my own bubble you know, people go shopping sometimes, yes. people go out. I would sit and read and yes. be over the moon when I do that. I agree with you 100%. It's a book for me. I yes. need to feel the pages. Yes. I need to put a bookmark, bookmark in it. Exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes, which people will hate me for, 
I'll underline certain like I areas of a book. Yes. People sometimes like to keep a book intact, but I'm the kind of person that likes to take notes and like underline yeah. and like my favorite passage in a in a in a or book. Or comment you know? or highlight in different exactly. colors. And you know what I like to do? Mm. I have a library in my parents' house. Nice. What I do is whenever I'm done with any book, if it has touched me, mm. if it had made me cry, if it had changed me, I would go and put it there. Nice. Other books might, you know, you just read them. It's a good book. I would maybe donate them or, yeah. you know, recycle yeah. them or something. But I always have that library where I can always go back and reread these books yeah. over and over again. You're preserving the good yes. ones, kind yes. of. Yes. <laughs> All right. So going back to SIF, um, you mentioned this uh, while you were introducing it. You were saying it's uh, for the youth and by the youth or for the children and by the children. Can you explain a bit more about that? I, I thought maybe that it was just, you know, children submitting their films. Um, are there other categories, maybe? Okay, so when we first started SIF, um, as I said, Her Highness, uh, Her Highness's vision was to do that for the children. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's more children, it was more children focused. So it was the first children film festival in the UAE and in the region mm-hmm. at that time. Uh, and then after us, Ajial started in Qatar. Okay. Uh, so first year into the festival, I remember it so well. It was only film screenings, nothing happening okay. at all. Just film screenings, no workshops, no nothing, because I needed people to understand what a film festival is. So people called okay. and said, so are is the Dubai Film Festival coming to Sharjah? No. Mm. Oh, are these the films in the cinema, Disney, Pixar? Mm-hmm. No. Okay. These are international films made by and for children. Wow. So then they have short films. Mm. They have different kind of animated films. They have uh, documentary films. They have feature films. Uh, live action so that whole media literacy was a was an important point to start with you know absolutely um we had a lot of i won't say conflict but we always have this post sif event the meeting Mm. so we sit there and we say well what went wrong yeah don't tell me everyone liked the venue you know the we need to know what went wrong and we had a lot of Parents, you know, coming in and saying, oh, what is this type of film? My kid will be influenced. Mm. And I remember that so well. At that time, my son was six years old. Okay. And a woman walked out and said, no. So the child in the film ate some pebbles. And now my child is going to go home and eat some pebbles. What you like ruined my kid's life. And I remember looking at her and said, now in this generation, they're exposed to everything. Mm. I cannot, as a mom, I cannot depend on media or schools. I have to have a role as well. At that time, my son used to live in costumes, literally. (laughs) Spider-Man, Superman, in bed, in the plane, in the mall, at home, in school. And I remember so well donating his clothes because (laughs) they're, you know, they (laughs) don't fit him with their tags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as, as a mom, I cannot say, you know what? I'm never letting him watch any superhero film. Yeah. Because he eventually will. Yeah. And by me saying no it will make him want to watch that and exactly. no more. So it's my role saying watch, but you know what? You can't climb on buildings. Exactly. You can't fly. So that's me saying this is, and I and I still say that until now. Now my, my son is now 13. Okay. So <laughs> I can not say, you know what? Don't smoke. Mm. Don't. It's not good for you. Why? Mm. Just don't. Now it's the power of media mm. where you showcase What happens if that thing happens? What will happen to you if, for example, you go and get to know different, you know, a group of friends that are not helpful? Mm. That we cannot hide them anymore Mm. from the reality of life. Mm. So it took us a bit of time for people to understand all of that. And eventually, and I remember, I think five years in, we said, so any parents issues? They were like, no. And I actually saw, I remember a family every single day and I looked at her and I said I've seen you yesterday and today and you come in every day she's like yes I use you as a reward I say okay you want to go to the festival finish your homework and they do oh that's so they can come and visit nice and so with time you know people kind of understood more it was so weird for them to sit and watch a French film or a Korean film or a Japanese in in its actual language like what are we doing but then with time 
the minds are open. And that was when we were just focused on on children. Now, as His Highness has instructed us to kind of, you know, expand it to have youth and youth, as they say, is up to 30, Mm -hmm. which is you which know, is great. Which great. is amazing. <laughs> Always good. <laughs> which gives us even a bigger kind of pool, you know, to yeah. to talk about different. And I would say, unfortunately, but the world we live in now, now my children need to know what a refugee is. Yes. My children need to understand that other um, countries are in hunger. Mm. That, you know, th- they have to see everything and they have to understand how can I be... How can I make a difference? Exactly. We always, almost every year, screen films by refugees. Oh, wow. About refugees, just to kind of highlight, hmm. you know, this issue. And as well, if my son or my daughter sees a film made a film made by a refugee, if he can do it, can't you? And I remember they used the, the, the road lamp as mm. lighting and really, really kind of, you know, torn out, but they, they produced a film. Yeah. And, you know, it had a message. Yes. And it made a difference. Yes. So, you know, it's it's that, it's where we are now, where it's not about watching a film and, you know, laughing and just leaving. It's mm. always about making a difference. We have a lot of things where we need to highlight and speak about mental health, bullying, pollution, sustainability. So we need the power of film to to talk about all of that. Agreed. I think that last sentence is is what I want to highlight the most, the power of film. I feel like we do tend to shield our our children from a lot of things, which is okay. But there's also a way of, you know, um, allowing them to face the bitter reality without making it negative. Yes. With... um, encouraging them to get positive outcomes out of it by helping out by, uh, you know, getting inspired. You were saying they see refugees, you know, creating these films and they think, okay, well, why can't I do that? Or why shouldn't I do that? And maybe they produce films that shed light on another social issue or 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 uh, a world issue that we need to talk about. That's a conversation starter. Uh, Mentioning these films, do you have any in mind that you want to highlight, like any of these uh, that stood out to you? Farha stood out so much. It was really, really very um, touching. Okay. And I remember a film, it was a Korean film that we watched in Cannes. It was about a teacher who wanted to save uh, a school. Okay. So it was a, they they wanted to, you know, tear it down, but it had like nine students. And they said, so if you get up to 15 and they maintain a whole school year, we won't close it. And I remember crying so much because, no you know, way. I was a teacher once, so it kind of, you know, <laughs> pulled my... St- it hit home, exactly. And I remember asking my, when we got it to Sif and we screened it, and I remember my asking my mom to watch it. Yeah. And until today, she calls and says, do you still have that Korean film? I was like, no, we, you know, it's like we have to pay for rights and yeah. screening fees. <laughs> She's like, I'll pay. I want my team to watch it. It's a very touch. And that was like seven years ago. Wow. But... Some films do actually, you know, it make a difference. With you, and yeah. yes, and yes, and touch your heart. Uh, what about Farha? What's that about? Can Farha you tell is about the. It's it's about a Palestinian girl who was uh, not allowed to learn or to go to school, and okay. then it had it 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 talked about, and it's based on a true story. But you know, sometimes there are films that talk about a specific thing Mm. but make you think of the whole picture you know make you read about the history make you read about what happened what will happen you know the reality of stuff Mm -hmm. Uh, so it was really really very touching Um, the thing is we're always excited every year because the films are always new yes so we screen around 80 to 100 films per year so that's 80 new films to watch every year yeah yeah, and honestly, you're giving a pl- you're giving people the platform to have their voice heard. Yes. I mean, these films would be unseen and would be unheard of if it wasn't for your platform. And I think that's uh, that's crucial because that gets the message across to everyone else. So tapping into the logistics of SIF, how does one apply? Like, what is the criteria? Um, how can I uh, contribute to the whole? Uh, you know film festival so what we do is every year we start the call of submissions in january okay so everything's on our website we open the call 
obviously we have the normal you know rules and regulations of each film you know uh, year of production mm-hmm. obviously you know being uh, from an Arab Muslim country we have to put these you know it, nothing to do nothing anti-Islam nothing anti-cultural no, and all of that mm-hmm. uh, and then what we also do we have films uh, we have categories so we have okay. you know documentaries uh, films made by students films uh, animation films so we have specific rules and regulations for each one mm-hmm. we obviously have the competition as well at the end of the festival where we we have a you know a jury mem- juries that choose the winners and something that we're really proud of is the best child made film the jury are young Oh. children and youth so selected by the by, children exactly That's so fantastic. we started that a couple of years ago and it was uh, and the way and what I like about it is when I see that it's you you take that person you teach them media literacy media criticism mm-hmm. and all of that mm-hmm. but you see how their personality changes throughout the seven days we have a lot of tears at the end and you know we miss this and it, it made a difference and then they come out with either wanting to to you know make a film or be mm. part of the industry so this year we we have a number as well and we found like two or three from our last year student uh, jury came into the workshop and said do you need any help we will you know kind of give you oh, hints nice. and we'll support you so you know yeah. that kind of community is what yes. we want to start yes yes uh, so you said you started from January do you have like a rough number of like how many submissions so Ar- almost near 2,000 submissions wow. per year from more than 50 60 countries around the world wow that's that's phenomenal and that has been achieved in how many years SIF has uh, this is the 10th edition this you were year. saying yeah. yeah so that's 2,000 per year wow around Roughly wow, one thousand five hundred to two thousand. So that's a lot of films to watch. That's fantastic, and, and in and in different languages. Yes, so they yes. come in in different languages. Yes, it's around thirty to forty countries, if not more. Okay. Now what we're trying to do, and I remember doing that, we had the map. Okay. And said, so we have film submissions from Egypt. We have from you know the UK, France. So I asked the team, where, who didn't submit to SIF? Ah. Go find filmmakers from there and let them submit. And they look at me and nice. like, no, but everyone did. I was like, mm, go check. So they find countries that they can't even pronounce. <laughs> and, you know, so we had a film submission this year from Bhutan. Oh, first yeah. ever. And, you know, the Congo, I think, as well this year. Fantastic. So I was like, go and find filmmakers. And it's very interesting when you meet these people. And mm. we meet a lot of international Mm. Um, people and, and the way they talk about you know the festival the importance of the festival uh, right. um, the culture of Sharjah you know how everyone is fe- you know that we feel like we're home mm. so you know it's it's a chance to kind of showcase our emirate tell people what we do and you know and I remember when we first went to Cannes Film Festival at that time we just did, I think we were like four or five years into the festival and you know okay. we had to say and you know the market there is huge of course. So, you know, we used to go production house to production house and, you know, introduce, so, you know, we're from Sharjah. And they look at us as like, you know, Dubai, we're next to Dubai. Yeah. And, you know, we have to do all that. Yeah. Now when we go, we don't need to because everyone knows us. Most of them, 80% submit to our festivals. Mm. Um, we have, like, until yesterday, I've had calls asked from people from around the world wanting to be on our jury. Oh, that's nice. So I was like, no, we're women. Yeah, exactly. on the team, so we're done, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. months back. Yeah. Done, no last minute things. Exactly, we're yeah. very organized. But we, too organized yeah. sometimes. <laughs> and uh, we had a lot of really good names on uh, our celeb- on our you know jury. We had Annie Kanoni Rose. We had uh, Haifa Al-Mansour, Hani Abu Asad, Will Smith, all nice. of them on our jury. And a lot of, you know... A local and international talent in the industry. Uh, we highlighted um, a lot of speakers uh, that, you know, for example, we had Jacob Tremblay as a speaker. We had Neil Sethi from The Jungle Book. Uh, we nice. had the girl who played Maleficent, mm. Elizabeth Malloy. Mm-hmm. Uh, last year we premiered The um, Secret Garden. So she, the girl nice. who played the lead was also uh, Dixie. Dixie was there. Mm-hmm. So we kind of highlight, you know, someone who's 
in between the ch- child and youth age to speak yeah. about uh, Freddie Highmore is a very big supporter of the festival. Mm. Um, we had as well um, uh, what's it? Naif Al Mtawa, the creator of the Ninety Nine. So a lot of uh, and I and I love it how they believe in yeah. you know the power of of the film festival, mm-hmm. what difference they can make and, uh, you know, and talking about their, how they became who they are. Mm-hmm. So it's not an easy exactly. journey and which, which, you know, makes a difference. Exactly. It makes a difference to believe in the cause, True. to be able to, you know, Contribute. actually exactly be part of it and, and for people to believe you. Because yes. if you don't believe it, people will see through that. Yeah, of course. And especially the children. Yes. I mean, children these days are very aware and they're very involved. I love the fact that, you know, there are jury members that are children and the children are, are involved in the logistics of the film festival because a lot of kids these days, and I remember I was like this when I was younger, I want to do things. Like, I don't want people to treat me like a child. Yeah. And giving them that autonomy and that power is, is fun- I mean, it's, I mean, I, I don't know what else can can make them feel like they are capable. Yes. It just makes them feel so capable to do anything and everything and giving them that push is is great preparation for the world. Yes. They feel like okay, I'm prepared now like I've done something. And so also much. there's also one thing we cuz you know we have a lot of submissions. So yeah. obviously some of them are rejected. Mm-hmm. What we do as well is any film submitted by a child or a young filmmaker. Yeah. Some like something around up to 18 year old. We just we do not just send a rejection email, mm-hmm. especially the ones that are here in the UAE. We we uh, organize like a session okay. and we explain to them why your film was not accepted. What can you do differently? Uh, what you know, it's not about you know rejection. Mm. No, we're there to inspire them and give them skills and help them and say you know we can, you know please come back and submit again and yeah. and I saw in a way that last year in our last edition uh, we have a green carpet, not a red carpet. Oh, you know. Uh, how so, come, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> well, it was, we wanted to stay away from the red carpet. So it's okay. not about the, you know, the flashy lights. And the and glam the and glam, everything. No. Okay. So we thought if, you know, and our logo is green. So mm. we said, why not the, the, the green carpet? Okay. So we have that. <laughs> and uh, so I, I realized as I was standing there, you know, welcoming guests, a lot of young filmmakers were walking and mm. talking to media and, you know, being thankful that, you know, they're par- I, either filmmakers or actors or, you know, being part of that film. So that, you know, made my heart full. Yeah. And I was like, okay, we're on the right track. Slowly exactly. but surely. Exactly, yes. exactly. Okay, I don't want to take up more of your time. I know you're a very busy woman <laughs> and <laughs> I know your schedule is full and we really appreciate your time. My last question is, what's next for Sheikha Jawahir on the side? And then what's next for Sif or Fun? Uh, okay, so I'll start with Fun and Sif, okay. obviously. Um, now, the funny thing is... we. The festival is happening in less than a month. Okay. But now we know what's going to happen in 2024. Okay. What will we launch in 2024? What's different in 2024? How can we make it better? So obviously we we always were like one step um, ahead. For this year, we, are, um, we started a trial of mm-hmm. uh, international youth and children's jewelry. Mm. So we have one from Syria okay, and one from Oman and we'll see how it goes and then we'll open it to a, you know, a bigger international and jewelry in the future. Oh, fantastic. So it's, it's interesting. And, nice. you know, as I say, because we are a 90 percent women team, mm. so we, you know, very precise, very organized, exactly. slowly, <laughs> but surely don't. And we're always, you know, take it one step at a time. Yeah. Don't do 100 when you can do two and see how it goes and then. Exactly. Take it from there. Yeah, it's very calculated. It's very, like, um, organized, as you were saying. Okay, and what's next for Sheikha Jawahar? Well, um, hopefully, my, my dream was always to have a flower shop. Since oh, I was, lovely. what, maybe 12? Oh, okay. Uh, I was so into gift wrapping and okay. gift giving and 
you know, making people happy. And, and flowers did that for me as well. Nice. And uh, everyone I know who's close to me knows that. So every time they see something that's relevant, they would, you know, send it on Instagram or message me and say, come on, it's your turn. Okay. So I'm hoping for in the next couple of years, I'll, I'll focus on that as well. Oh, that's lovely. That's very lovely. Do you plant yourself? Like, do you actually like and the gar- gardening? and A little bit here and there. Okay. It's not easy. Okay. It's not. Uh, at all. Especially yeah. with our weather, you know, you need to know. Um, but course. I'm more of the beauty of flowers, you know, walking into a place, how yeah. it's... Uh, uh, and I... I I have a lot of attention to details. So, for example, if I'm giving a gift, I, I love to make it personal. You know, nice. your favorite color, mm. uh, something uh, that's related to something that you like, you know. Very nice. I try that. Very nice. Sheikha Jawahar, thank you so much. Thank you. We'd love to have you back. Uh, you were saying the SIF is going to be uh, is going to begin on... 22nd of October up to the 28th. So Amazing. the opening will be on 22nd and then 23rd to the 28th is a full week of, you know, films and panels and workshops and fun. Fantastic. We'll stay tuned. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.